So, um, <coughs> Sumtu is uh, some Sumtu preliminaries is uh, southern Chin, southeastern, um, about two two thousand eight hundred households in three townships, um, uh, maybe about twenty thousand speakers. Um, also known as Songdu, this is where it is. So the, this is probably the best map. So the three main um, <coughs> places where it's spoken are um, so uh, Mindia, Nyebong, and um, An are the three dialects referred to. And the data here is from um, Nyebong. One of the problems being that uh, some uh, the tones in some two that seem to be reversed in the the sort of the two forms, the two dialects at the two ends of the speaker area have sort of mirror images of each other's tones, and if you're in the middle, things are very very unclear. So you have to check where people are from before you ask them anything tonal <laughs> at all. Um, so um, and a few sort of general, <coughs> general facts about uh, the phonology of some two, some interesting interesting things. Um, oh, where are we? Yeah. So um, here are some some two nouns which come in high uh, high and low tones. Um, that's fine. Um, the every major or minor syllable has a tone, and there are lots of non-tonal. Um, uh, functional morphemes which acquire their tone by um, uh, oblig sort of OCP ripples out from the, the tonal um, lexical morphemes. Um, the, there are five vowel heights, um, so again, a sort of field worker's nightmare finding which of those high uh, uh, e vowels is the right one, not always reflected in spelling. A lot of the um, orthographical data that we have is needs checking. Um, some morphological structures, so um, you have syllables with uh, one tone um, and you can have some very unusual um, sort of MS clusters, so that's one syllable, there's no uh, morpheme boundary in there, that's, that's, in fact you can only really see it. See, um, B, a single morpheme with a minor and a major syllable, so nafmet. And in my um, a dot, I've, I've used hyphens for morpheme boundaries and a dot for a minor syllable vowel. So a dot is a short a, uh, but I got so bored of typing schwa's that I just went for the dot and it kind of <laughs> got fixed. But I'm so sure but I wouldn't like it in there. That's, her. A problem, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna have to go. <laughs> gonna but, have uh, <laughs> but once you get used to it, it's it's quite efficient because it you, you you have you have visually something that feels more like the number of actual beats that are there. Mm. So mm. Met is one has one beat. Um and in the met the, the main syllable has a low tone, so the ng by because it because it is next to it gets a high tone. So these minor syllables can get a tone. Um but they can't they can't determine the tone. They can only get tone by um, uh, by derivation. Okay, so forms like uh, in C, two morphemes, a minor syllable and a major syllable. So the verb to go, C, low tone. Musi is uh, two plural inclusive. We go. So the m is the prefix, and it gets a high tone because it's next to a low tone. Musi. And I, oh yeah, and I use backward slash for down and forward slash for up because that is a million times faster to type and I don't see it anymore but if I hope you can read those okay it's a lot easier than putting accents on top of the vowels and it's also I like it because you're associating tones with whole syllables rather than specific vowels um, and it's faster to type which is great okay um, three morphemes so we've got um, in this form uh, he cooks uh, for me so clap a uh, low tone verb, um, a low tone transitive verb is uh, cook. The uh prefix is third singular, and the m mm in the middle is he does it for me. So it's, it's, it's wrong, it's lost, so it shouldn't be true, it should be third to one. So the m in between the um, subject agreement and the verb can do a number of functions. It can do you to me, he to me, I to you, and yeah, mm. is that the same in here? Similar? Me? So, so you can do he he to me, you to me, and I to you, I think. So the, the m in the middle. 
Yeah. 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 Also yeah, it's also you? first person object. Sure. Yeah, yeah, he cooks for me. So is e rather than he? Okay. E. But again, um, lots of checking to be done because it doesn't always depends on the transitivity or otherwise of the verb too. So those mm. things are hard. Right. So and then um, uh, we've got three morphemes with two major syllables at the at the bottom. So the subject marking prefixes disappear in negative verbs. Negation is very simple, you just have an a uh, suffix. So sik is go, sika is, um, sorry, sik is uh, pluck. Sika, yeah. um, don't pluck. Sika, um, don't pluck it. So um, in, a, in an imperative form, you have no, there's no subject agreement, there's only object agreement. Um, and because there's no um, subject agreement prefix, there's no minor syllable at the beginning, so you get this unusual sick cluster at the beginning. So that's just some fun things about um, some two morphophonology. Verb stem alternations, um, uh, so they seem to kind of come in two kinds, one where you, um, one's where you lose something and one's where you add something. So the verbs like drink, buy and fetch, you lose a final stop and verbs like sleep crossover go or cook you you um get a final stop where there was only a dotted stop so things seem to be going in two directions and from what i can recall about 60 it's only about 30 percent of the of the verbs that have two forms that's that kind of proportion a lot of verbs just have one form and there's a lot of optionality so it seemed to be acceptable for, for quite a lot of verbs not to do the stem alternations as speakers will find with it. So it's clearly sort of on the way out um, for more verbs at the moment. Um, and that's some com com comparable data from Dive, so from Hel I haven't um, attributed this data from uh, Helga So Hartman, um, obviously. So quite similar um, to Dai and I'm sure similar to Hyo and other languages. Um, and you never know with them, um, I haven't looked at uh, as many languages as the, as the rest of you, so you never know quite whether the distribution of um, uh, verb stem choice uh, is the, the same, but in uh, some two at any rate you get stem one in finite affirmative verbs and stem two in negatives and imperatives, um, and also in um, subordinate clauses in some cases, as I recall. Um, here is the some do pronoun system. So you have um, uh, some interest. This is where the the uh, attention to tones became relevant. So you have sort of tone flipping for the dual. Um, so gi, nang, and ya that are all fairly um, recognisable uh, singular pronouns for second and third person, and the plural. Um, in all cases, you add ni, which has a fixed high tone. That's not open for debate. Um, and exceptionally, you get um, the... So the marked forms, what's interesting here, the dual forms seem predictable. The ni has a fixed tone. You would expect the minor syllable to the left to have a low tone because it's next to a high tone. Um, and um, the plural forms have exceptionally a high minor syllable to the left of the fixed um, ni, um, uh, which is unusual. So the, the, what distinguishes dual from plural is a change in tone in the minor, in the minor syllable. Right, um, so those are the pronouns. The pronoun, the verb uh, suffixes uh, do something similar. So we've taken the verb up to drink. Um, so ga up, na up, a up. And again, the dots are a short schwa. And then the dual forms, ma ok, gan ok, nan ok, and ok. And then the plural forms, ma ok, gan ok, with this strange sort of um, double high, which, which feels very, very marked. Um, and I would welcome your comments on um, whether markedness of the plural rather than the dual seems unusual. It does to me. Right, and then in other cases we get um, 
uh, with low tone verbs, we get um, the tone of the verb itself flipping when you go from the dual, from uh, in the dual forms. So in the singular, we've got gasi, nasi, and asi. So I go, you go, he goes. And in the plural, we have the same tone pattern. So masi, gansi, nansi, and ansi. And that's uh, first inclusive and exclusive, the first two there. And then for the dual forms, the um, root verb, the, t the tones flip, the root verb goes high, and the um, pronoun prefix goes low. So they sound the same, but with the opposite tones. Um, and if you go to the other end of the Sumtu speaking area, all of that is reversed. And if you go somewhere in the middle, you get a mixed pattern. Um, also kind of true for light too. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Upstream and downstream. The tone flipping. Tone. Yeah. Okay. What do they, and so mid, what's so, interesting is what, hap, what happens midstream? Because there is, a, in the case of yeah, Sumtu, so there is a big town <laughs> midstream. And they, you know, so, they still understand each other miraculously. But the, there was, I did find that in um, Mimbya, which is the kind of middle, middle area where the, the bigger, the sort of biggest sing, urban, quasi-urban population is, that they would refer to people from Yebong who speak this kind of Sumtu as being the ones who go ding, 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 and kind of make fun. They had a very distinctive speech because their tones were perhaps more marked. So, um, which all goes to suggest that the functional load of the tones um, isn't that great. But yet we have systems like this which suggest that it, <laughs> it's there too, so all oh, interesting. Right, um, uh, so here we have um, a, uh, so up, which is drink form one, and oa, he doesn't drink, so uh, up, he drinks, oa, he doesn't drink. And at has a fixed high tone, so you don't get turn, uh, turn alternations. Um, and again, in my notation, it would be good to find a way of marking the tones that are fixed and marking as being different from the tones which are derived, derived. without requiring the reader to know so much about the phonology that they could fill in the unmarked ones. That's, that would be a bit unfair. Right. Um, okay. And some we find in uh, negative verbs, so negative verbs being perhaps the more conservative forms, um, uh, but not <coughs> just in negative verbs, we find these verb suffixes um, after the verb, so um, where the um, pronoun prefix marking is not present, we can have these uh, um, suffixes which uh, show us number, gender, sorry, number and um, person. Um, and these compound suffixes, and if you strip out what's there, these are the morphemes that seem to be there. So we have a negative morpheme, a dual morpheme, an exclusive morpheme, um, which shows us also that one singular is exclusive, which is kind of nice. Um, and um, uh, an inclusive morpheme, plural I, morpheme. I have this, sorry, I have this question. So Hang is uh, exclusive? It seems to be. Hmm. I rather got inclusive. For light to, so you know, sorry, in, um, hummy, hummy and uh, have I have I written inclusive hummy, instead so of the form is hummy. So I yeah I is inclusive, not exclusive. That is a typo. Yeah. yeah, I'm speaking rubbish. Yeah. No, hold on, what's the one? Exclusive. Yeah, no, one singular is exclusive because I'm excluding you. Yeah, that's right. Ha. Ha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's in the negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get hang in the first singular, the first the first person dual exclusive. So that's us two, not you. So I, me, not you, us two, yeah. not you, and all of us, but not you. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've got your your here. So this is from Zakaria, um, and they are similar, but not the same. <laughs> So if you want to compare. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there is I mean it, it does line up to some degree. Just the world, yeah. Here we are, here they are. Here they are. I, I thought I'd done this. So we've lined them up so the so you Yeah, what's going in the third person of dual? What does that what does that form mean? What's that? 
Hoi. The third jewel, jewel so cut hu. Hoi. 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 Yeah. With a drop of salt in the middle. Hoi. 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 the end. Hoi. Not you. Yeah. You don't. Hoi. 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 Yeah. Hoi. Okay. So then. Yeah, I was also, you know, frustrated not to get it in light because I thought, you know, they would also have hoi. So they don't have hoi. So it's kind of silly now. So. Yeah. So we have this ni, yeah, ni, which means two. two you know, yeah. Ni is very, very. If you do Burmese, that's obviously two. <laughs> okay. Right. And then um, the next thing I'm looking at, um, which is the, the big, is this e suffix, um, which uh, you know, nice, nice example of a suffix where you can spend a week talking to um, consultants and you'll get a different answer from everyone you ask what is e doing and they will just tell you uh, something that matches the sen- for the sentence you're dealing with mm-hmm. and what we eventually got to was that it can make um, uh, intransitive verbs transitive so sit to go becomes to take something somewhere so you go you take something somewhere si e lo to come lo e to bring something um, and it can also make transitive verbs reflexive slash middle. So lock is to fetch something, lock e is to fetch it for yourself so that you've got it. Um, and the problems where we, so we're working in Burmese mostly, the problems are that there are um, all sorts of other ways that you would translate that because Burmese doesn't have these um, and it took us a long while to pin it down. So I now I've just got some examples of um, sentences with these in. So hlit is to buy gutlit. I buy, I bought a house, so you have, um, you can mark the house with an object marker. Um, there's no sort of ergativity in, um, uh, in Sumtu. Uh, so mm. there would be, you could mark other things. You could mark the house. With so there's no loud now. Nah. You could have imma. You could, have, you could say gele uh, imma. So le is rather different, right? Le, huh? So does le mark intransitive? No, le is. Um, is it a topic marker? Is topic marker. Okay, so yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's. Le. Yeah, I don't know. So I, also in intransitive, so you get the same thing. K, K, K. Mm? For intransitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was no. There were no surprises there of any kind. We need to compare notes. <laughs> anyway, um, so to buy a house is im gatli, I buy a house. Im gatli e, if so, e doesn't have its own tone, so it gets a high tone or a low tone depending on what it's next to. Mm-hmm. Um, that means I bought myself a house. I bought so a house. Very effective kind of. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know what you call it, what you want. It means I bought myself a house. Yeah. Yeah. It works quite well with French, French uh, reflexive. Je me suis acheté une maison. So you can have two different means. You can have reflexive meaning and also you can also yes. have augmented yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of depending on the context. Um, so I, I shave myself. This is it. So you've got this nice transitive verb. So gayani uh, is I shave myself. I shave my beard. The beard gets object marked. I shaved myself the beard. Feels very like French to me. But without <laughs> yeah. E, what does it mean? Huh? Without E. Um, it so means... You shave someone else. You can shave something. You mean you could um, harvest, like to cut your cut your rice down. So it's the same verb to to shave, yeah. to cut hair, and to cut stalks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the e is only there if it's for the benefit of the. And there is no the st- stem alternation. Hmm? Do you see any step any stem alternation? No. Stem one, stem two, no. variation. No, not not to do with the e-ness, the presence or not of e. Yeah. So here's some. Um, so to get la is to get the um, <laughs> this. So just to contextualize, this data is, is all sentence only. It was from a, a textbook written by one of the consultants who had good um, uh, general syntactic awareness. So we went through. The stuff they had written, and then ask questions around it. So some of the some of the data is from uh, from his uh, language learning, some two language learning textbook, and some of it is from the discussions around um, uh, that material. 
Um, so the two chickens have sores, <laughs> got sores. So the chickens um, uh, got themselves sores. So my chickens have, have got themselves sores and now I have a problem. Mm. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the sense of uh, Anla'i. He got an inheritance from his parents, so he got himself, he has, so there's a sort of reflexive, benefactive yeah. sense. He got himself the benefit of, inherit of an inheritance from his parents. And the first one is sort of auto-malefactive, the wind? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My. Yeah, it's like the oh, the baby's <laughs> the baby's got itself a cold again. It's that yeah. kind of thing. I, I think yeah. Um, I can also get uh, credit. I can get myself. So again, a benefactive sense. Um, he said, "You will get earplugs." <laughs> so the uh, earplugs, as in ear plugs, like this we call them. I don't know. Yeah. But not to keep the sound out, but to wear to wear in your ears and look fabulous. So he said, "You will get yourself some earplugs." Um, and I got the plank back again. I got, I got myself, I got my, I got the plank back again for myself. Yeah, yeah. bah, bah for back. Yeah, yeah same, oh, same as that's, that's another one that it's referring. Huh? Also, you like it. Yeah. Bah, bah. Yeah. So galai, galai, bahni, and bah has a, bah has a term, has its own term. Nothing else does. And ni is, um, uh, sorry, not irrealis, that's wrong. Um, perfected. Yeah, anyway, oh. not relevant. Right, so seat to go, um, uh, as mentioned before, so uh, she didn't take her bag, keep his bag. She didn't go taking her bag with her. His mm. brother took it away, so... Um, Yata le, so le is your topic marker, marking the brother, and um, the e tells you that the brother went and was taking something somewhere that isn't that isn't mentioned in the sentence. Um, take this to the lower to the lower end of the village. So Namdong is the lower part of the village. Ah is your sort of locative um, mm. marker. Um, C E E um, Y is a sort of emphatic imperative kind of marker um, so take this take this down there um, I will take the axe away with me all right <laughs> um, so help is your axe EI. so I is your irrealist marker that completely straightforward in some two you just do I for the future and you're, yeah. and you're, <coughs> and you're done <laughs> there's nothing to say so no no uh, no need for a talk on that one. But what's uh, the, is there a verb stem alternation? Huh? <laughs> the there is verb stem alternation. Do you yeah. get uh, the form one or form two with the uh, Wait, Sorry, with the. Do you get form one or form two? Form one. Three? Form one. You get, yeah. So that's interesting. Is that interesting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the thing, it's, they're all very different, aren't they? And the. Um, uh, and C is a good one because it has a very, very clear form to stem um, yeah and what aspect is that used in or what tense well negatives use? and um, imperatives but I'm seeing two imperatives here then it hasn't used, he hasn't used form 2 so that <laughs> perhaps suggests that C is one where Maybe. the form 2 is you would suspect sick it would has a K on the end in the form 2 I think. Yeah, like sit, no? huh? was it sit I think I saw was sit. it sit yeah okay Did we, we had it somewhere we yeah. had Okay, right, and this is a nice one. So the other thing that E constructions do, there's a sort of um, what feels like impersonal type constructions. So there is a blister on my hand. So ma is to be blistered. Um, and so gabona, on my hand, on his hand, ah, locative, ge, my. So ma e uh, tells you that the subject of ma, the verb is third person, so the hand. Um, it is... Um, it is blistering to me. My hand is my hand is my, my hand is causing me a blister. Mm. Mm. Cause that's the way it works. So um, the mm is, mm is so it to me transitive. Really. The mm, yeah the yeah, exactly it's making so it transitive. From transitive, to transitive. Yeah, and mm is showing that it's third to third to first person. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
and it's there is this kind of uh, hierarchically organized, yeah, because it's like here there is both third person and first person involved, but it's about well, okay, how do you tell them about it? Right? Um, it <laughs> also <laughs> really depends on the vote, and it's annoying because this, these are some nice um, some nice sentences, but in some cases the mm, the sort of transitivizing object marking mm, is lexicalized, so some verbs just have it always, um, mm. so it's hard to test. Um, so sometimes it's just or, or there in the citation form and never without it, but not with ma. So ma is a good example, but it's also if you look in your corpus, you're not going to find a million sentences with blistering in it. So it's a hard one to to check um, after um, after the event. So the, there is a sore on the cow's stomach. On the cow's stomach, that's um, the first constituent, and then it is blistering it. So third to third, there's no need to mark the object. So the blister is blistering the cow. Um, sort of impersonal e, so kai is to be good and kai is to be um, to be well. Um, but means something like want and but e means I feel like so it is. It is wanting yeah. to me, yeah. And there again, there is there are some tantalizing. They feel like in personal construction. So it is. It is wanting to me to something. The the beef is making me feel like eating kind of kind of thing, yeah. Which I haven't got to the end of. And that's all I have. So um, any questions on that data? I'll be. The next steps are to um, look through the corpus more, um, and hopefully to have a chance to check some of them. There's a lot of checking that needs to do. Check with, um, compare with Hyo and Leidu. Yeah, sure, yeah. so I think it's interesting to interesting you know, yeah. yes. um, But the core functions of this E seems to be, so you can make um, your intransitive verbs transitive and you can make your um, transitive verbs reflexive or sort of benefactive. I'm thinking about that one form where you were expecting it to be. Oh. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. Expecting it to be. <laughs>